Good afternoon to you. So as you probably know, we're making some progress on the shop. So I've been down here spraying spray foam insulation, sealing this thing up, and man, is it gonna be sealed up. Can't wait, I'm getting so excited. Actually, some progress. See the big difference in how thick these panels are, and then you can also see like it just makes it it's like uh, turning into the world's largest Yeti cooler, right? So as you can see, they got uh, this wall done. They got the wall on the other side done. They've already started working on the back just a little bit. And they've already tested a couple spots on the ceiling over here. Getting close. I think probably two more days worth of work. Um, this thing is gonna be so insulated. It's gonna be sealed up so tight. And the way this stuff works too, it actually makes the structure way stronger than it would be without it. Yeah, stuff, uh, so this is close cell. There's two kinds of spray. Go ahead, let me, let me give you the Voss version of spray foam insulation, which is, I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So just take it for that. But there's two kinds of spray foam insulation. You got open cell, you got closed cell. Open cell is like more of a porous, almost like a sponge style foam. You can kind of tear it apart. Closed cell is not spongy. It's a solid piece of hard foam, really dense. And you can't like, you can't just break it off like you would be able to break off a piece of spongy foam. I think the closed cell, if I'm not mistaken, the R value on the closed cell foam is are seven per an inch and so most everywhere in here we got about two and a half inches uh it actually in my opinion the r value is actually greater than that because it doesn't it closes every gap there's no air coming in here um and usually when they do r values it's not based on uh drafts it's based more of like a insulation value when you start knocking out a lot of those cracks and crevices, the air can seep through. In my opinion, the R value goes up. So the way this works, they basically got a two-part mix. It comes in these big drums. Got an A and a B. And it just travels through this hose, heats it up somehow. It's got like a heater or something. I think that's part of how it works. Anyway, it travels through this hose in two separate parts. And then at the very end, comes out of this gun. That actually sprays it on the wall as a liquid and then obviously a foam kind of expands. Now the open cell, when you spray it, it expands, I don't know, four or five times its size. Like it gets, it really expands. The close cell doesn't do that so much. You spray it on, it expands a little bit, and that's it. Now, in my opinion, I guess if there is a disadvantage to foam, well, the, the main disadvantage, I guess, for a lot of people is cost. This stuff is way more expensive than any other type of insulation I would think. And I only think it's more expensive by a small margin. I think it's more expensive by a large margin. 
But like I said, properties of this are way better than anything else out there. And it seals this thing up super tight. I mean, if I have, you know, one of the screws walk loose on the ceiling that hold the, the ceiling pieces on, this is gonna seal all that up. No water's gonna leak in. Doesn't, it's not gonna matter. So um, the other disadvantage, I guess, is that the texture, right? You kind of have this weird texture going on. Uh, I think you would kind of want to insulate this too from, from UV light. So you'd want to paint it if you were going to leave it exposed like this. But for me, it's not going to matter because I plan on sheeting this on the inside. So probably put tin on all the walls. Maybe the top half of it will be like some kind of rustic wood, some kind of corrugated tin on the ceiling, all the way across. Uh, the section over here will probably be rustic wood style. I mean, I'll, when you walk in here, I want it to feel like an old barn. So all this in a perfect world will disappear. That's the plan at least. So you won't even see it. And what I'll probably do is you can kind of see where all these main beams are. I'll just screw wood slats right to these beams, compress this a little bit if I need to, or shave it. You can kind of shave this stuff off a little bit make it flat, put some wood on there, and that's what I'll attach the tin to. If I, like the tin, I'll actually do the wood this way. Just attach the wood pieces here, and attach the tin to that. Um, for the wood section, if I do like barn wood style, I'll actually run the strips on the braces themselves, vertical, and then just attach the wood sideways. And the good thing about that is it's actually gonna have another air pocket between the foam and the sheeting, which is just basically more insulation. I don't know if they're gonna use it, but that's actually what they use to shave this stuff. So you can just run that down and shave it perfectly flat if they wanted to. Really my goal in here is I want this space I don't want any excuse not to work in this space. I don't want it to be cold, I don't want it to be hot. Probably put maybe five, eight, 10 tons worth of uh, heat and air in here. I'll have to kind of figure that out and see what I need. But um, I want to fire it up. I don't care if it's dead of winter, dead of summer. I want this place to be super comfortable. I don't want any reason not to be hanging out in here or working, filming. Uh, I find a lot in the summertime that I don't bring you guys content because it's too damn hot in the old shop and I don't I don't want that in this shop. I hear footsteps. What are you doing? Did you run all the way down here? <laughs> really the big thing is too with this setup is that I've been kind of waiting to do anything inside the shop because I knew that everything either had to come out or I couldn't really build anything. I couldn't even work on this place because I knew that this had to happen. So the good thing is, is now that they've got this in here, once they're done, then I can actually start to work in here. I can start to make videos in here. I can actually keep some vehicles in here. The only thing, the only other thing I want to do before um, I do some of that stuff is maybe the floors, which I'm sure you guys will want to see. I'm gonna do a high-end epoxy floor, I think, on the on this thing. Get those in here once I do that vehicles equipment all that stuff can go in here and i can just kind of work around it as far as sheeting the walls and that sort of thing it's getting very exciting can't wait anyway as always thank you for joining me i'll see you guys some more this week go do work son